Degenerate Teens. Let me try. We on. What's good with y'all? Degenerate Teens. This the podcast. Hey. We on once again. You know what I'm saying? Back. Got your boy D with him. You know what I'm saying? Boy, you know what we are doing here right now with this podcast, y'all. Tonight. Or just evening or whatever y'all want to call it. Because you can't tell with all this quarantine shit going on. But we going to get on a few little topics tonight. Yo. Yo. Uh, I call it uh, quarantine confessions. Yeah, quarantine confessions. We just confessing <laughs> some, some quarantine shit. You know what I'm talking about? Shit that's been building up on the chest for a little bit. Now we got to get it off. Yeah. Things like that. How you been doing? I've been cool. How you been doing? Uh, holding up in there, about to leave out of this city. Gotta go and move on to the next one, so I'm gonna see what's up. I might see in Orlando. Ah, uh, okay. Which one are you, why are you coming this way? Uh, cause, <laughs> cause bitches be crazy, so. Okay, you already messing up. Mm, mm, mm. You already messing up. <laughs> already know. Yeah, so. So my current situation is, yeah, I'm going back. I'm, I'm thinking about going back to Orlando, but I got, you know, everything's on lockdown. Everything's on lockdown. Yeah, until May 31st. Yep. Our job, what we do, we can't really do. I mean, we're doing well on a podcast, but I mean, you know, that ain't paying rent right now. Yeah. They ain't paying rent so, rent. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know what to do. And I'm just going to head up there and just hope to God something, <laughs> something works out. Yeah, it's a few, it's a few jobs hiring. It's like, um, gas stations, you got grocery stores and you know, stuff like that. But you know, our field, our field is closed until like the 31st of May. We on lock dizzle. It ain't, yeah, we ain't, it's nothing rotating up in here until, yeah, same. So we just gotta wait and, and sit on our hands right now. I'd be mad, I'd be wanting to get up and go somewhere, but yeah. Ignorant people coughing everywhere and still socially gathering. So, what you gonna do? Tell, tell me you don't miss like the heat in the kitchen and the steam and the pressure and everything. Like now, like you don't miss it till it's gone. Yeah, yeah, you don't miss it until it's gone. You never know what you got till it's gone. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> like I miss it. Like I keep telling about my this chick over like. I miss that steam. I miss the, the ticket machine. That eh, eh, yeah, like, you know. I'd rather hear that right now. Yes, <laughs> that oh. means money. Fuck yeah. that. Right. Yeah, that's what that means. That means you clocking up money right now. <laughs> but it's sitting at the house wasting it. Yeah, oh, I feel you, bro. Well, I miss everything. It'll be good to kind of see you for a second, anyway, because whatever. But. What's on your mind, man? What's been going on? Like I said, St. Pete ain't shit. It's locked down. Miami locked down. Orlando's yep. locked down. Yep. I can't leave the state. No. Nope. I was going to head to Cali, but that shit ain't going to work out. Yeah, I thought about yeah. taking an early vacation, going to Michigan or something. No, that's out of the picture. I wouldn't go up there anyway because uh, my city got a lot of cases. Where the city I'm from up there got a gang of cases because everybody up there is just... Um, basically antsy, and they they want to get out and and party and everything. And you know, summer coming around. It's spring right now, but summer finna pop off in about a couple more months. And everybody wants to get out there and show themselves. <laughs> you've been cooped up all winter, and you've been cooped up an extra couple months due to this uh this coronavirus. So, boom, people want to get out and shake their tail feathers, but they can't. They gotta wait. <laughs> they gotta wait. They're not waiting. They like, nah, we trying to get out right now. Do it. Get it done. But you know, we don't know too much about this thing right now, so we can't just hop out there and be like, oh man, it's time to party again and all that. You know, folks still dying, people still contracting it. Um a lot more people are recovering from it, but still got a big, big, big influx of people that don't even know that they got it that's still passing it on to other people so with all of that you got to calm you got to calm down and make sure that you know some of these damn cases is um basically quarantined like we is now 
there was something as I, I was actually researching and so I saw that was going on. Not only is the death rate like reaching, also the unemployment rate is growing dramatically. Yeah. Well. Like every day, that thing is blowing up. I don't even understand that. Like, yeah. I don't even seem optimistic anymore. No, I think we had like 20, 20 million, 22 million now people that's on uh, unemployment. How many dead? Um. I mean, I'm sorry. That sounds so disrespectful. How many have passed away since the since this? I think I think it's roughly like around seventeen or eighteen thousand people worldwide. Nah, it's way more than that. It's way more than that, bro. No, no, that, they they just had it on. Um, they just had it on the news not too long ago. It's it's not. It ain't reached over um twenty thousand yet, but it's close. Oh. It's close. Okay. But um. Like a lot more people, I say about they say like almost four hundred thousand people to recover from it though. I can see that. So yeah, that that's a a good number that the the media is not pitching out. You know, of course, you know they want to constantly fear monger a little bit. I mean, this is a serious little thing, but they they getting ratings by fear monger. You already know people gonna tune in to their channels just to hear the latest. So it's money. You know, I really do believe. I believe that. I believe that the media does put fear just to get those numbers up. Yeah, so, that, that's like, it. Yeah. They but just, in a way, though, what's going on is kind of serious. Because look at us. We ain't working. We ain't, honestly, dude, we just shoot the shit lately. Yeah. Like, yep, and you see in this, seri- in this serious situation, you already see in this serious situation that we're going through, some people making money hand over fist. Some people ain't. You know what I mean? Like, uh, our industry, the restaurant industry right now is basically closed until further notice. Because we base we depend on tourism, we depend on the locals, we depend on people coming in and just um, visiting. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you got visitors. Hospitality. Like, yeah, we're working hospitality. on hospitality business. So we are we basically greet people, get them full, and, and push them off so they can have fun. That's not a necessity. You know, food option is, but the type of food we serve is not a necessity. It's basically just like a luxury. So that's why we are, aren't essential. But the people who work in grocery stores are essential because that food <laughs> is the food that we cook at our restaurant. So we need them to, to keep bringing us food so we can't shut them down. <laughs> I'll tell you. All right, so let's get what's on your mind, bro. What are you yeah. doing? Shooting shit? Yes. Restaurant industry sucks. Yeah. Economy is not looking well right now. Money's going down. People are passing away. And the unemployment is reaching an all-time high. So we degenerate gents. I have no advice right now at the moment to give you. Uh, yeah. Because I'm, I'm one of those in the politics of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I'm in the 99th percentile. So. Yeah, exactly. Like I know, I I still got a job when everything is said and done with, but right now, just sitting here is kind of just blah. You know, I've been getting job. I've been doing interviews because they've been uh, okay. Well, here's a crazy thing. It's an ironic thing that closing down restaurants, right? Yeah. During this virus, but what's going on is that the cooks or whatever the servers, because they're not working, they end up just quitting and going and getting something else. Yeah. So, guarantee you, best believe. Once this thing, I hope to God, it does leave or it does stop, like, you know, chills out. It's going to cause a massive explosion in the hospitality industry. Yeah. It's going to have to be a lot of new hires to... New hires, yeah. Cause, it's going to have to be a lot, a lot of people, people being you know, hired. Because a lot of people got new know. jobs now. Yeah. Some, some people got jobs working at home and they probably be like, okay, I'm more comfortable working at home knowing I, I can go out when I want to now. But... I work from home because I'm making a little bit more and I'm more comfortable and I'm spending more time with the fam. Or some people might just be like, well, that's it for me in the serving thing. I'm just going to go find something just in case this happened again. That's uh, a little bit more sturdy. And I'm just going to involve myself with that instead of doing the serving thing, even though the serving thing makes a lot of money. But it's we we basically when we, when we do get back at it. It's going to be like a super rush. Then it's gonna slow down, and then it's gonna get back to normal. Crazy, back to normal. Like, but in the beginning, it's gonna bust out. Yeah. Shout out to my boy AR. Just want to let you know something. He used to work for Time Warner, the cable company. Yeah. And when I say it like that, it's because he worked from home, and they still let him go. 
boy, yeah, trying to cut, cutting deals. That's the world we're living right now, man. Mm-hmm. And they probably did that just so they can come back around and hire somebody um, in the near future at a lower rate. Because you know they're going to be offering, like, cool rates but lower rates because they're going to be needing people to, to fill up the job. So they're going to be like, yo, we'll pay you this much and this much. And it's going to be a lot of uh, businesses coming out with the uh, um, incentives for hiring. Like, yo, if you um, refer a friend, we'll give you, like, Two three hundred dollars, you know what I'm saying? Because they're gonna have that little um package that most of the businesses got uh, the bailout stimulus. They're gonna have a, a little bit of leftover money from that. So they're gonna be basically throwing it around like, "Yo, get us some people. We we'll get you this." Because they know people gonna need the money, which is also something else in itself. But it's how it's how it's gotta go right now. Yeah. Man. Just gotta go with the flow, bro. Things get stuck. Yeah, but it'll be all right, though. I think we. I think when we get up out of this, it's gonna be a lot more people that's gonna be a little bit smarter. It's a lot of people who didn't have any money that got a little bit of money now. It's smart people that got money in their hands that needed it. That's gonna start some stuff. So we might see like a lot of little businesses no, coming up out of this. We might catch um, we gonna catch a whole slew of new rappers, bro. We're going to catch a lot of people. That, <laughs> a whole slew of new rappers. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of them. We can watch. Young we can, Broke. Uh-huh. Young Broke Boy. <laughs> Boy, Young, young Little 2 G is going to be all that, all that. Because uh, uh, everybody going to have enough money to actually get into a studio. And people going to be like, yo, let me get like $100 for like four hours. They're going to be like, well, I'll give you $100 for two hours. And nowadays, these folks don't write um songs like that. They don't structure songs. Like, we used to structure songs back in the day, so it's just a couple uh, bars, a hook, and then the rest is just the beat with them saying ad-libs over it. So, basically, that two hours to turn into, like, six songs. A song these days is, like, two and a half minutes. Yeah. Yeah, remember back back in the day, it was, like, four, five. It was, like, four or five, like a whole movie, like an Mm -hmm. epic type shit. Yep, you had, like, a whole breakdown. You had, like, the two verses, then right... Before the end, you had like the epic little breakdown or the interlude. Then they hopped over to the the ending of the song. And in the end of the song, sometimes that thing would switch up. And you would hear, boy, you'll be hearing that. It'd be like something. And then the whole beat switch up on some like either angelic or some heavy uh, anti melodic type, you know what I'm saying? Joint like, uh, man, who, who did a lot of switch ups? Who did. Um, well, what's in your rotation right now? Um, what I'm listening, you talking about as far as people I'm listening to? Yeah. Um, I'm listening to Joyner because he got that new uh, album, ADHD. I'm listening that to that. Fire, yeah, yeah, that's nice. Uh, I'm listening to uh, I went back and started listening to um a little bit of Nip. Uh, I went back and started. I, I just basically my music. Um, playlist depending on the season and the mood. So basically, I'm in that. I'm in the the grind mode. So I done went back and listened to a, like a, a lot of grinding type songs by a lot of artists like that. Like you know, saying some Jeezy, Cameron, um, artists like that, you know, what I'm saying Young Bloods, uh, UGK, just folks like that who put you in that grind mode so you can keep so you can grind. So I just basically oh, like listen to them. Hold on, like old school young bloods or yeah, old school. Yeah. I, I listen to mostly old school. If you, if okay. it ain't something that I like that's within the new music, I just go straight old school and listen to old school tracks or tracks that's not that old, probably like four or five years old. Bro, yeah. I go ten years back. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, I, I go like twenty, thirty years yeah, back. Yeah, I be like going I'm... all the way back. And you know, when you go to the R and B, I go all the way, all the way back. Yo, on the real, bro, I've been killing the R&B lately. Like, I've been on an R&B tip for a second now, like a couple days. Yeah, it's been, um, I think I've been on, I ain't been on an R&B tip. Now I've been kind of like on a, on a hip-hop tip, but I've been on listening <laughs> to... Every style hip-hop? No, I've been listening to, uh, I like to listen to a lot of underground artists. So I've been listening, like, to a, a lot of artists that's not mainstream, but they coming up, like, uh, my dude Bino, uh, Redu, uh, dude named Blast. You know? Yeah, um, Vito, um, the singer, Vito the singer. Um, it's one dude my little brother put me on. I think his name, like, D something. 
Um, and I forgot what his name was. My little brother put me on him. His name D D something. He got a song called Black, and that was pretty nice. And I've been listening to uh, a lot of J Cole and um the what's this what's the name of um his his little group that he got. Uh, oh, uh, I know it's G I D. It's J I D in it. Um, he got Earth Earth Stone or Earth Tone. Um, he got the girl. Uh, what is it called? The girl. Dreamville. <laughs> Dreamville. I forgot what the girl name was, but he got Dreamville. You know, all them little, all them artists. I've been listening to them too. It's Cole been uh, Cole been coming with it, and he got another album that just came out. So I'm finna listen to that, and uh, I'll probably do a reaction off one of them songs, probably uh Saturday or Sunday. Oh yeah! Once again, congratulations for over a thousand subscribers. If you can get that one on that. Yeah, sure. You almost said one. Uh, 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 hey, so. edit that in there, please. Mm -hmm. you report that up. Yeah. Sprinkle a little magic. Yeah. I, we um getting up there. I, I got a couple concepts when I get, when I get around when I talk to you. Uh, I got some scripts I wrote down, dude. All right. So what's up? Yep, I got a little um. I also got a little fucking um. Uh, Got a little sp not sponsor yeah sponsorship ambassadorship whatever you want to call I saw it. That. I um, saw that, bro. Yeah, from a fitness company. Because of course, fitness is my thing. My uncle is a bodybuilder, uh, so fitness is I always been down with fitness. And I checked on their website; they got some some supplements I use. Plus, I'm get back in shape anyway, so it, that was perfect timing. I think that there's a there's a professional athlete that I've kind of really really cool with, and I think we can. Plug that in, so yeah, that would be kind of cool. Yeah, because I can um, because the the supplements and stuff they got, they it, they look pretty, they look official. Um, I know I, my uncle, like I said before, my uncle he got he's a professional bodybuilder, so I only thing I gotta do is read off the ingredients and whatever to him, and he'll let me know off top if it's gonna be good or bad for me. So uh, I got that, in the, I got extra incentive or extra backup mm -hmm. for that, and. Yeah, that should be, that be, should be pretty gravy. All right, now let's get back into some shits. We talked a little politics in the beginning. We talked economics. Caught up with the real shit. Mm -hmm. What was this bad baby thing you were talking about, which I feel wrong about talking about? I know she. How she got on? They got on her head about. Uh, she took a. Hold she, on, just to be clear, hold on. Discrepancy with two grown ass men. Don't uh, know why, but the guy wants to talk about this. No, so, this, I'm no. She just about, um. She's gonna lead into the conversation about uh, the appropriation thing, cause she was, I guess, uh, she had a Instagram photo or a photo that somebody did, and they basically <laughs> they kind of painted her to where she looked like she was trying to be a little darker than what she was. So I was that was, that got me to thinking, like, how what is your takes on cultural appropriation and using her as a um, example, do you think people like her who came up off of appropriating culture um, will last too long in the industry? Alright, D, give me a second. Alright, so what's going on with that right now, it is cultural appropriation because what it is is you can't fault what's popular. And right now she's young, so she's going to fall into what's pop to, you know, pop. Mm -hmm. So she's going to fall into the popular tool. So, I mean... Mm -hmm. She is kind of falling into what she does. I mean, she's a female rapper. You know what I'm saying? And right now, who are the hottest rappers? Cardi B, Nicki Minaj. Yeah, that's, that's and, weird. I, I just crazy that she's a freaking rapper, bro. But <laughs> that's, that's a career now. She started off as Cash Me Outside, but now, like, no, this is her career now. Yeah, I ain't heard none of her songs. You serious? No, I have not heard not one of her songs, bro. I ain't heard. Yo, I wish we were in the studio right now, dude. I will play a song with you right now. It's called "What Bitch." <laughs> See, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't never heard. Song, that. I've never heard of that song. It's so sad that she got us. Well, of course, like, like you said, that like, that's that's what I was I was saying. With stuff like that, she can't get too mad that they saying that she culture appropriating. Is you what bitch? What bitch? What? Bitch? What white girl you hear? Well, what what white girl you hear going around saying stuff like that? 
Uh, every white girl in Pine Hills. Every, <laughs> every white girl in uh, Apopka. Every white girl in Miami. Like, yeah. Yeah, the easy. What they that's, do. Been a, that's been around. See, yeah, it's been around. It's I been, mean, what you want no, no, no. That's been, a, they have been around a, a lot of people of color to learn that. That that's not um that's not a regular pattern within within their makeup and and some of them girls like you say some of some of the white girls that were in the hood that are from the hood they do that but shorty don't seem that shorty don't look like she from the hood she don't look like she from the hood she looked like her mom had one black friend and she was just like oh you look real cool so I'm I just I'm going to gravitate to you but. Hey, I don't, I don't fault the girl. Everybody else doing it. She making money off of it. They, they not stopping money. her. So, I wonder where net worth is. Can you look that up? Uh, not now, but I'm pretty yeah. serious. I think she last time they said she was like worth twenty million or something like that. Twenty million damn dollars. I would not dare. But hey, get money just by. Doing stuff you ain't supposed to be doing. His name feel. Look at how damn day. What did you get up? Abort? This quarantine thing got everybody. This Zoom, this Zoom thing is hot though. The zoning thing? The Zoom. Now the Zoom thing, that thing hot. Oh. Wow, why you say that? Because it, it allows um it basically allows you to be in the same room at the same time, but still with distance between that's kind of dope. What the hell are you doing? Oh, I am Googling Bad Babies Network. Ah, of course. Because I am so interested in what's going on right now. Because I know, yeah, it still drops uh, it tracks and shit every Friday, Freestyle Friday. Shout out to you out there. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to do that in, in a couple and later on tonight. I record them and I record them at nighttime, put them out. So what would be your problem with it? Would you say it was cultural appropriation or you think she's just taking advantage of a culture that she's not really a part of? Uh I would say she she getting coached by people in the background. But you, we I know a million girls that that's white and act like her. But they don't they don't they've been raised in the hood, so hey. I ain't, ain't no telling. I don't know where that little girl from. I don't, you know what I'm saying? I ain't signing her or nothing like that because I don't know where she really from, but I can tell that she's not from the hood hood like that. If she was from the hood hood like that, then she'd have already got hands put on her right when she was younger, especially if she was in the hood hood. She wouldn't have been able to catch me outside, all of that. No, she'd have probably been getting slung, over, slung around. By them, the neighborhood hood girls, they'd have been like, "Oh, so you wanted them to think you just better it up," and they'd have whooped her on. Bro, she lost to Wolf Vicky. You, you not from the hood. Oh, she, okay, I'm not even getting into this. Bro, we two grown ass men. We ain't getting, hey. Okay, let's talk some adult shit. Yeah, that is I, adult and shit. And then on top of that, she got scraped. She is worth four million dollars. Four million dollars. That's not that much. It's a lot. It's not that it's much. A it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot to our little broke asses, but to anybody with it enough. That, no, that's not that's not anything, and that's net worth. That means that's collecting everything together. So that means her rap deal is not worth that much. That means her the I think the most prominent thing she got going on is makeup. I think that's the most prominent thing. Yeah, see, that's like almost a million. So with but that in with that in mind, you know, that's about you know. <laughs> She got the nine thousand because I'm pretty sure that, like I said, her her songs are on the charts like that. Like I know one time it was one time it was like it was popping or something like that. But I know now it's not in rotation. And if it is, I don't. We don't. I don't hear it. I, I'm everywhere. Oh, definitely not. No, she's making her money off of like concerts and like touring and shit like that. She's not. Yeah. Banking off of making new tracks. She's yeah. just jumping around. Okay, so basically her rap career is she did one little album. It didn't do that well, but it did well enough for her to have enough fans for her to go around and tour off of. Just like Wo Vicky. Yeah. Like Wo Vicky ain't never rapped, in, but she had that one song where she got ate up for because she was calling the Rice Gum Kid 
<laughs> she was saying ching chong ching and all that being offensive and hit my man up with the ching chong ching chong and they basically was like okay you're canceled and then she was like oh i'm sorry and then she came back and now uh, she back doing the thing and she was just um announcing that she's gonna be in she in arizona somewhere at a car show or some shit and i'm just like that's so sad that she got the same thing but whoa vicky she went all the way she was like i'm black <laughs> she was like i'm a black girl i, I did ancestry.com and it, it said i was 0.2 percent black so now i'm black she didn't take it there didn't she yeah she did it was it was it was terrible but it was, it was terrible. funny at the same time don't say it was terrible bro yeah, it was terrible man <laughs> that was terrible. She shouldn't. Have, I don't. I don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand her reasoning for even saying that. Like you, you can tell it's not one lick of black in you, and just because you pop your lips up and um, because you pop your lips up and show your teeth and talk with a southern draw, that does not make you black. I mean, actually, not does not. There's nothing I could do to justify. It. Those actions, so yeah, that'll make you say about that. That'll make you back at all. But hey, but I told with... you that it was the same concept we talked about when you were like, when you get the girls in the neighborhood, like, can you really fault them if that's all they really know? Yeah, no, no, you can't. But they also do know that they have an extra incentive by not being black. But just like she, just like she said too, which uh, she's getting a little bit more black backlash for, is that she said. Uh, and I guess in the part of the video, because I watched a few commentaries about it, she was like, um, during that time, I guess she was getting a little bit mad. And she was like, who want to be black? She's like, the fuck? So now everybody is like, come on now, chick. You, you're talking about, you talk black, you act black. But now you're saying, who want to be black? So basically what you're saying is, I like your culture. Uh, I like everything about you guys. Except I don't want to deal with the consequences because I actually don't look like you and I'm you know what I'm saying and when I did try to look like you y'all got on my ass about it so I'm kind of glad I'm not like y'all but I, I will take y'all culture and get some money off of it so if they keep letting her do it that's on them if I was anybody if I was anybody who was a fan of hers and had a little bit of color to me I'd be like nah well, I, actually, I am. If I was one of her fans, which I'm not, but if I was one of her fans and I heard that and when she said that and I watched her video and she said all that, I'd have been like, yep, I'm good. We ain't cool no more. You know, because I, I don't mind being black. I mean, it's not a big problem for me. I don't mind being black. So yeah. It doesn't bother me at all. Yeah, it, it, don't bother, it don't make me not one. It don't bother me not in the least. But I guess everybody else, it make other people uncomfortable, but they just gonna have to be uncomfortable because we here. It is what it is. Yo, D, you ever think about being white? No. No? No. Not at all. No. When I was younger I used to, but no. That that's just if basically you are, I'm if unproud you are enough. Derek Whitmore or like well, not not Dion, like what's a really white D name? Uh, <laughs> it ain't too many. Yeah, it's not really. That's not a thing. Yeah, you know, you know, it's no, it's not really too many white names that start with a D, like Dylan. You can say Dylan. Dylan. Dylan, that would be your white boy name, Dylan Whitmore. Yeah, but I'm so glad it's Dion instead of Dylan. <laughs> so, well, I don't want. If I was white, I'd be. I'm proud of who I am. If, if I was white, I'd just. I'd be proud to be white. I, all of us, every race, got their own little things that's going on and all that other good stuff, but. I'm not. I'm not here to judge nobody, and I'm definitely not here to get on nobody's nerves about what they're doing inside their culture. Just as long as they stop messing with my culture and, and telling me, "Hey, we're gonna bother you about your culture, but you better not bother us about ours." No, that's not. That's not gonna happen. You leave me alone about mine. I leave you alone about yours. You bother me about mine. I'm going to bother you about yours. Are you ready? That's how the game go. You believe though that with everything that's going on, people are still looking at like culture control and everything like that. Like we got real shit going. Like, but like when we just talked about death rate and fucking diseases and pandemics going on. Yeah, 
He put the line. I don't know, we're just like we're just creating some content, just having fun and getting you know letting the de- degenerates have you know just to have a conversation about dumb shit. But like, damn, dude, we still worry about shit like that though. Got to. That's it. It ain't gone. That's it. It's not I was explaining. I, I was explaining that to my to my chick. I was like, because she's very like militant. She like studies a lot of this government shit. Yeah. And like I like I realize there's a culture, and then there's like. There's people that are very informative, which I do respect. I have seen a lot of like informative people, but then also there's people that I've watched that have given at this time of, in the moment, entertainment, creativity. You get what I'm saying? Like just to get your mind off it for a second. Yeah. There's been a lot of entertaining things going on, challenges and all that good stuff. Been a lot of um, positives coming up out of this um, negative situation. But and within all that positive and stuff, you also see um other folks trying to stir up chaos too they still trying to stir up chaos and all that shit so you got to watch out for them because now that everything is almost about to get back to normal you see people are about to get back to the normal ways of doing stuff and i'm telling you these streets are going to be flooded with folks once um everything open the beach is going to be packed um the club's going to be packed um the streets of downtown Orlando is more definitely gonna be flooded, and we're gonna That's have just to, gonna look like Halloween. Yeah, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to basically um, keep an eye out for what's going on because if we don't, you gonna have a whole bunch of sick people again. Everything gonna be closed down again, and people gonna have to go back on unemployment again. And I ain't trying to be with all that, bro. I got we got stuff to do, man. I got a few more items to get. I got a few more. Buildings to secure or, or deals to secure, buildings to look at. Guys, we got to get some things done. So, Basically, you got a life to live is what you're saying. Yeah, we got to, not even, but yeah, life to live. And we got to get stuff go back going. We got to get um, things back in rotation because this ain't, this ain't the way to live. I thought I told you never. I mean, I do believe in the fact that uh, chaos causes creation. Without chaos... There would be no reason to create. Yeah, no reason. Through destruction comes, through death comes life, and through destruction comes creation. Yeah, yeah, like rebuilding. Like, just, you destroy a building, guess what you do? You rebuild a building. You get what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. the morbid idea, but look at um September 11th, God respect, okay? But respect. that happened, but guess what? People, people did pass, things happened, but guess what? It unified an entire country. Yep. At the time. Yep. You know? Yeah. So you gotta look. You know there are certain negatives, but there has to be silver linings in every situation. And I'm and I, I'm an optimist, so I really do believe there has to be a brighter. The, the darker it gets, the lighter it's gonna shine later on in life. Yeah, it's gonna get bright soon. You gotta be there for it. See, on that note, y'all, we I gotta tag that on. I'm gonna tag it like crazy. Hold on, yeah. no, on that note, please. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. I'm just saying that that was a good enough. A good enough closing statement for us okay. to close out the podcast with. Because we just want to put some knowledge on y'all head real quick one time so y'all know what it is in here. But yeah, y'all. Once again, it's been a it's been a pleasure being a, um being able to do this. I'm so glad we got this Zoom thing now so we can do it. Um Thursday is the spot, you know what I'm saying, for the potty. You know what I mean? You wanna you got any words before we uh exit up out of here? Uh um, everybody love everybody. Alright? We live in a time right now where things are getting way too crazy and the least we can do is appreciate and love what we have around us. Because right now there's way too much negative. There's way too much dark. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. down energy going on. Yeah, too many too many dark things going on and not enough light things. And my little you know? word of wisdom to everybody is keep yourself clean. When this is all over with, y'all go ahead and get healthier so you don't yeah. have to worry about nothing like this again. And also, now everybody who has their third eye closed, open it. Open your third eye and start looking deeper than just Bro, the third. going to be that podcast. Come on, man. No, no, I'm just saying, <laughs> open your third eye. Open your third eye a little bit. You know what I'm saying? We ain't them, oh, we ain't them was, folks, though. Wash your ass. Wash your clothes. Wash your clothes. And clean your goddamn bathroom. Clean, That's all I was gonna say. Man, clean your motherfucker. Man, clean your goddamn bathroom. Man. Clean your 
clean the goddamn bathroom. Yeah, all right, please. Clean that motherfucker. With that being said, we want y'all to wash y'all stinking asses. Wash y'all hands. Don't be passing the corona to nobody. And don't get fined out here for not having no mask and anything else on. So, with that being said, this is your boy D. Witty. It's your boy Theo Badass. And we are DeGeneres. It's and tough we are going. Because um, it has been a gift from day one.